Hi, I'm Steve Sample with Bama Talk. Don't miss a single episode of Bama Talk Show available now on iTunes, Stitcher, or your favorite podcast app and on the web at bigbrainsmedia.com. This is the Weather Extreme video, the morning edition for Thursday, April 18th. I'm James Spann. Another severe weather threat late tonight and early tomorrow morning. How about the risks, timing, all that? Let's get in there and talk about it. First of all, things are quiet this morning, kind of warm and muggy early at about 5 o'clock. These are sky cam shots. That's the Inverness sky cam. Traffic on 280, very quiet, but that will change. There's the Jasper sky cam from the King Building in, in uh, Fayette County. There's a look at downtown Fayette. Well, you know, there's trouble coming when you see a map looking like that. Got a big, long-wave trough coming out of the western states, and uh, we all know in April those can produce heavy snows in the cold air in severe weather in the warm air, and we are in the warm air. It's 70 early this morning at Tuscaloosa. The cool spots, Gadsden and Fort Payne, they're in the upper 50s. But you can see the uh, classic look there for a spring storm with cold air flooding the western states behind the front and very mild air coming out ahead of that front. And the front this morning is from near St. Louis down to about Dallas-Fort Worth. Uh, in the cold air, we've got uh, winter storm warnings up for parts of uh, Minnesota, South Dakota, Wisconsin. In the warm air, a lot of flash flooding issues. All those dark burgundy counties are flash flood warnings. Looks like flash flood warnings up for parts of the Chicago area. And uh, down to the uh, south, still a tornado watch uh, for a small part of East Oklahoma, Northwest Arkansas. That's set to expire at uh, 6 o'clock this morning. But later today, we got a big old moderate risk. And now the guys have pulled that into the northwestern corner of Alabama. And as you look at this map, remember, this runs through 7 a.m. tomorrow. So this is valid today, tonight, into early tomorrow morning. And surrounding that, the slight risk has been pulled eastward. And now that that runs from near Scottsboro to Montgomery to Chatham, just north of Mobile. And uh, that does include Birmingham and Tuscaloosa. Clearly, the greater severe weather possibilities will be north and west of Birmingham early tomorrow morning, but we'll take a look at this in full detail here in just a bit. Uh, this is the tornado outlook, and the greatest concern for tornadoes will be in that 10% zone. And, and remember, that means that there's a 10% chance of a tornado passing within 25 miles of a given point. Considering how small tornadoes are, that's a pretty significant number. And there could be maybe a significant tornado in that hatched area there just north and west of Alabama, and this is the chance of damaging straight-line winds. And uh, that would be 58 miles per hour or greater, and that's almost 50-50 down into northwest Alabama around the shoals. So, uh, again, we'll explore all this in detail. Then tomorrow there is no formal risk after 7 a.m., just the low 5% pro probabilities over southeast Alabama. And the rain for the next five days, this carries us through Wednesday morning. This is suggesting about one inch. All right, model fans, this is the GFS, the OZ Run, uh, valid at uh, 1 o'clock local time today at 500 millibars. There's the trough in the west, and uh, down below that, the surface low is west of Chicago with storms down through Arkansas and eastern Texas. And, of course, those will slowly progress east, but notice there's nothing happening here, and I think with warm air aloft, we'll be dry today and warm with uh, low to mid-80s, the, the GFS has 84, the NAM has 83. Now, this is tomorrow morning, 7 o'clock local time. There's your trough advancing in. Down below that, now the surface low is way north of here, over Michigan with a band of storms blowing through. The timing has been pretty consistent here. But this is the GFS. Let's try and get the timing nailed down with some of the other models. This is the high-resolution NAM. This is the North American Mesoscale model at 1 a.m., and it's got the storms over northwest Alabama. And notice it's not really a solid line. It's more cellular. So I think there is some concern, clearly, of a tornado threat over the northwestern counties of the state. Certainly the Shoals, uh, Hamilton, Haleyville, Vernon, Fayette, places like that. Now, this is 9 o'clock tomorrow morning. The... the NAM is really slower than, than many of the other models. Uh, it's got the main line just coming through Huntsville and Birmingham and Demopolis. So it's taking its sweet time, and then by 7 p.m., the rain is gone. But if the NAM is right, we're going to have to hold on to the chance of showers and storms on through at least early afternoon tomorrow. 
All right, let's check the RPM. Uh, this is valid at 3 a.m. And it's got the storms uh, over northwest Alabama. And again, clearly, this is the, the greatest concern. It's, you know, midnight until, you know, 4 or 5 o'clock for the northwestern counties. It's going to be pretty active there. Now, by 7 o'clock, the, the, the RPM shows a greatly weakened, really, batch of showers coming through Birmingham. Uh, the RPM is very consistent in this idea of the severe weather threat winding down by the time it reaches Birmingham, but we're not totally confident of that. And uh, we'll certainly leave a chance of severe weather in for the Birmingham metro, but clearly as you go east and south of Birmingham, the risk really will diminish early tomorrow morning. We'll look at the instability values coming off the uh, NAM. Numbers are higher now. You know, th this has been one of the big limiting factors, and we wonder if the models have been underestimating the instability. This is valid at 4 a.m., and now we're showing instability values of uh, over 750 joules, the green up to about Birmingham, which is a little concerning in that the other runs have just shown hardly any instability. But considering the, the system, the type of atmosphere we have in place this morning, you could just look at the observations. I think the higher instability values are correct. Uh, this is the shear, the bulk shear between the surface and 850 millibars, uh, lower 5,000 feet of the atmosphere. And that's certainly adequate for some rotating storms, uh, bulk shear values of, of 30 to 40 knots. And um, this is the wind field. This is the winds, uh, the low-level jet at 850 millibars. And again, we're seeing some 40 and 50 knot values over the northern third of the state. So uh, the, the big window for severe weather, I, I'd say midnight until... Uh, 6 a.m., there could be a few severe storms past that, and the rain could go on past that, but in terms of the core severe weather threat, midnight to 6, uh, the greatest threat, Birmingham north and west, and especially over the northwestern counties of the state. Uh, initially, there could be a few tornadoes, isolated tornadoes over northwest Alabama, but as the storms approach Birmingham, the core threat kind of changes to strong straight-line winds. And then the storms weaken as they move east and south, uh, the rain will be ending during the late morning hours from west to east, and most of the rain should be in Georgia by mid-afternoon. So that's kind of the synopsis there. Now, Saturday, we all know that's going to be a nice day. Now, we're going to start the day pretty chilly. In fact, the, the NAM is showing 37 early Saturday morning. So I'm just saying now, uh, for some of the colder pockets, there could be a touch of frost. So if you got something that really would be hurt by a touch of frost, and if you live in a colder pocket and you know where those are, you might want to protect them. Uh, but we warm up into the upper 60s, a cloudless sky. Sunday looks good. We'll start the day in the 40s, and the high should be in the low 70s. Just gorgeous. Next week, moisture tries to begin to return, but we'll leave it dry on Monday. High should be in the 70s. There's Tuesday storms off to the west and Wednesday of next week. This is Wednesday at 7 a.m. Another trough coming in, another batch of storms. Very similar to the situation tomorrow morning. Those could be strong, maybe severe, but it's really just too early to define that risk or even think about defining that risk right now. We'll watch that in coming days. And then, hey, look at a week from today. That's a deep old trough coming in here, and look at the colder air dropping in. Another very chilly air mass out there toward the end of next week. Uh, this is showing even potential for a few a snowflake or two over high terrain, maybe over across the Great Smokies up there. Wow. We'll jump out there toward the end of the forecast, May 3rd. Looks like a cold front coming in here to the south of here, and that would be kind of... Uh, quiet, benign, if that's right. That's it for the Weather Extreme video this morning. Notes on the blog. I'll be traveling. I'll try and do an afternoon video, but we'll be at the uh, Pell City Publix location. The program Weather Radios this afternoon. Timing is good, considering we've got some uh, late night, early morning storms coming up. But one way or the other, we'll have notes on the blog by 4 o'clock today. Don't forget to watch us on ABC 3340 News on the live stream of the television side at 4, 5, 6, and 10. Thanks for watching. Have a great day, and God bless. Be sure to catch the next episode of Just Talking It Up on iTunes, Stitcher, your favorite podcast app, or on the web at BigBrainsMedia.com. Hey, you forgot our names. No. You did? You forgot our names. Don't be silly. I'm Janet. You're a crash. See? <laughs> She's just like a goose. She wakes up in a new world every day. <laughs>